Collection View has two properties that control the layout. These are Items Layout and Item Sizing Strategy. Items Layout specifies the layout to be used. An Item Sizing Strategy specifies the item measure strategy to be used. These properties are backed by bindable property objects, which means that the properties can be targets of data bindings. Good day everyone. I'm Michael, and I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech in audio. In this video lesson, you will learn the following. 1. Layout Xamarin Forms Collection View. 2. Add Search Bar and Empty View. Now let's open the Visual Studio and do some coding. I already created a data model for our project. Then in our code behind, I also created an observable collection and add items using the animal model. Let's create first a typical collection view. So here is our collection view with two elements, image, and label, and wrap a frame layout. We can now set the item source of the collection view in code behind. Let's run the app. Here is our typical collection view where the items are arranged vertically. This is similar to a list view, but what makes the collection view differ from a list view? We can lay out the collection view, whether in linear or in a grid arrangement. Let's modify this and make it horizontal. Here I added a property element of the collection view, which is the items layout. Under items layout. We can use either linear or grid items layout. In linear items layout, we can set its orientation, the default value is vertical, and the spacing between each item. If you notice, the height of the collection view occupies the space occupied by its parent element, in this case, the stack layout. We can modify this by setting its height. That's how we change the orientation of the collection view. We can also lay out a collection view in a grid form. Let's just copy this collection view. Then change the name of the collection view. Then go to code behind to set the item source for this collection. Now, instead of using a linear items layout, we are going to use a grid items layout. Then set the other properties. Let's run the app first to see how it looks. Here is the second collection view we just added. For this element, we can remove the height request property so it automatically consumes the available space on the screen. When we lay out the collection view in a grid, the spacing is different compared to the linear layout. Here we need to set separately the spacing of horizontal and vertical. Then the span is the number of column. 
In this demo, I set it to 2, that's why the items are displayed by 2 for each row. We can also filter the collection by adding a search bar. Then let's implement the text change event. Again, I'm using language integrated query or link to query my collection. Here we search for animals where the name starts with the character or characters input to the search bar element and set the results to the item's source of the collections. Let's run the app again. Now, what if we search for an animal that does not exist on the list? For this, we need to provide feedback to the user that there is no data to display. Collection view has a property called empty view, which can be used to provide user feedback. Empty view will be displayed when the item source property is null or when the collection specified by the item source property is null or empty. Now that's how we lay out our collection view. You can also pull to refresh, a swipe gesture, or at a selection event. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone!